Table 8.1, the effects of hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistance on omega-6 and omega-3 metabolism. Insulin stimulates DCD leading to low ALA omega-3. Insulin stimulates D6D leading to low LA, high GLA, high DGLA, omega-6. Insulin resistance inhibits D5D leading to low EPA, low DHA, omega-3. Insulin resistance inhibits D5D leading to low AA, omega-6. Table 8.1, end. Insulin isn't the only hormone that affects the activity of these fat-converting enzymes. Glucogen, adrenaline, cortisol, and aldosterone are just a handful of the other hormones that influence these biochemical processes. Diets very low in sodium, salt, increase adrenaline and aldosterone and these hormones reduce activity of d6d and d5d for this reason low salt diets increase the need for epa and dha due to the reduced desaturase enzyme activities another extremely common hormonal issue these days one that interferes with conversion of the parent omega-6 and omega-3 fats into their derivatives is hypothyroidism. Thyroid hormone is required for proper activity of D6D and D5D. So individuals with suboptimal thyroid hormone levels may benefit from consuming more EPA and DHA or taking good quality supplements. And remember, LA and ALA compete for the conversion enzymes and the more omega-6 LA in your diet, the more it will crowd out omega-3 ALA for the for use of those enzymes. To give you some numbers here, increasing LA intake from 15 to 30 grams per day decreases the conversion of ALA into EPA and DHA by a whopping 40%. To translate that to some something meaningful at the dinner table. A single generous serving of salad dressing could account for 15 grams of linoleic acid, all by itself. High insulin levels, low thyroid hormone levels, and consumption of omega-6 and trans fats, it's no wonder so many millions of people suffer the effects of omega-3 deficiencies. Medium chain triglycerides. Medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, are saturated fats that are 6 to 12 carbons in length based on the number of carbon atoms in the molecule. For example, butyric acid found in butter has just 4 carbon atoms and it's considered a short chain fatty acid. And oleic acid found in olive oil and lard has 18 carbon atoms and is considered a long chain fatty acid. The foods you are probably most familiar with that are sources of MCTs are coconut oil, Roquefort cheese, and palm kernel oil, which is used mostly in chocolates, candies, and other confections. MCTs are considered ideal for weight loss compared to long, longer chain fats because they're not metabolized the same way as other fats. Other fats pass from the small intestine into the lymphatic system and then into the bloodstream, where they can be delivered to cells to be used as fuel right away, or stored in fat cells for use at another time. Contrast this with MCTs which pass from your small intestine directly to your liver, which either uses them for fuel or converts them into ketones, which are another kind of fuel other cells can use. Because of this difference, it's less likely that fats containing MCTs will be stored as body fat compared to the other fats. Additionally, the rapid conversion of MCTs into fuel leads to enhanced safety and decreased food intake, which may be why MCTs have been shown to be less obesity-inducing compared to long-chain saturated fats. 
A meta-analysis of 13 randomized controlled trials found that compared to long-chain fats, MCTs decrease body weight, waist circumference, hip circumference, total body fat, and perhaps most important, visceral fat. So if any fat could be said to be good for losing fat, it's MCTs. This is why coconut oil has become so popular recently. You can also find pure MCT oils as a supplement in health food stores. Some people enjoy adding a spoonful or two of coconut oil or MCT oil to their morning coffee or tea for a quick energy boost on top of the caffeine. Other people often have impaired fat burning or long chain saturated fats. That is, they don't burn long chain saturated fats and get energy from them as effectively as leaner people do. The same doesn't hold true for MCTs though. Consuming MCTs, at least compared to long chain saturated fats, results in greater energy use at the cellular level after meals. And greater energy use means burning more calories, even if you're not exercising. This doesn't mean you could be a couch potato and expect to look like dynamite by simply eating more MCTs, but it might mean that when you're already following a healthy diet and getting a good amount of physical activity, MCTs can be an extra tool in the toolbox, a little ace up your sleeve for boosting your fat burning even more. Coconut oil. Pure MCT oil isn't suitable for cooking as it contains mostly caprylic and capric acids, both of which have low smoke points. Coconut oil, on the other hand, is great for cooking because about 50% of its fat content is an MCT called lauric acid, which has a high smoke point, suitable for frying and sauteing. Aside from a higher smoke point, another thing coconut oil and other high lauric acid oils have going for them is as cooking oils is that they're low in fragile, unstable, unsaturated fats and are therefore less likely to oxidize and turn rancid and therefore harmful when heated. So if you're following a weight loss plan but still want to enjoy the flavor and satiety dietary fat offers, coconut oil is a good option for cooking compared to the saturated fats in butter or lard and definitely compared to the fats in soybean and corn oils. Compared to soybean oil, coconut oil has been shown to promote abdominal fat loss in humans. In a small study of 20 obese but otherwise healthy individuals, virgin coconut oil caused a one-inch reduction in waist circumference in just one week. It appears that coconut oil shares some of the anti-obesogenic properties of the traditional MCTs. Fat oxidation rates. Consuming fats with higher oxidation rates may lead to less weight gain due to reduced fat storage and enhanced fat burning for energy. Lower gas acid is one of the most highly oxidized fats in humans, which may explain why coconut oil seems to be such a good fat for weight loss. Unsaturated fats and long-chain saturated fats have lower oxidation rates. Though long-chain unsaturated fats are easier to metabolize and thus oxidize at a higher rate compared to long-chain saturated fats. Within the category of saturated fats, the oxidation rate decreases with increased chain length that is, the longer the carbon chain of a saturated fat, the lower the oxidation rate. In terms of oxidation rate, caprylic acid, 8 carbons, is greater than lauric acid, 12 carbons, is greater than myristic acid, 14 carbons, is greater than palmitic acid, 16 carbons, is greater than stearic acid, 18 carbons. Thus, owing to their higher oxidation rates, Medium chain saturated fats may be better for weight loss than longer chain fats. One animal study showed that animals given MCTs with their high oxidation rates via parenteral nutrition, intravenous feeding, had increased daily en energy expenditure and just one third of the weight gain of animals given long chain fats. What does this mean to you in the real world when it comes time to eat? Well, if you're looking to lose body fat while still maintaining your health, you may want to cut the fat off your steak and use a little coconut oil instead. Keep in mind, of course, that fat loss depends on many factors besides the oxidation rate of a fat. Choosing to get more of your dietary fat from MCTs rather than from beef or pork fat is just a little hack to stack the deck in your favor. 
If your goal is to lose fat, here are the good, better, and best choices for which fats to eat and also the ones you should avoid as much as possible. For better fat loss results, try to incorporate foods in the better and best columns. Avoid trans fats, industrial seed oils, soybean, corn, cottonseed, safflower oils. Good LA from Whole Foods, e.g. nuts and seeds, palm oil. Better omega-3s, marine sources, EPA and DHA from seafood. Plant sources, ALA from nuts, seeds, and grass-fed meat and eggs. Oleic acid, olive oil, macadamia nuts, avocado. Best, medium-chain triglycerides, coconut oil. Note that this applies mainly to individuals who consume a moderate to high amount of carbohydrates. Individuals following low-carbohydrate diets may have different results. Some of the MCT oil products you see in stores are purified oils that contain only fats with 8 carbons, but less expensive versions that don't convert to ketones as easily are mixtures of C8 and C10 fats. Some, manufa some manufacturers now produce MCT oils that contain up to 30% lauric acid, a fat with 12 carbons found predominantly in coconut oil. Because this raises the smoke point, making it better suited for cooking than regular MCT oil. MCT oil formulated to contain lauric acid tend to have fewer of the unpleasant side effects some people experience from consuming large amounts of regular MCT oil, such as upset stomach or lar loose stools. Other uses for MCT oils include adding some to your coffee or tea for a ketone boost or using it in homemade salad dressing. Just don't make it all out of MCT oil. Use mostly extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil and replace a little of that with MCT oil. There's no need to supplement with MCT oil or coconut oil, but you can use coconut oil and high lauric acid MCT oils for cooking and baking or use the coconut oil as a skin moisturizer. What does it all mean? Cutting back on refined carbohydrates is a great strategy for weight loss. But for people who can't imagine life without bread, the type of fat they eat will help them offset a little carb indulgence. And paying attention to the kinds of fat you eat is particularly important for those with type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. For these individuals, consuming foods with more omega-3, seafood and flax, MCTs, coconut oil, and monounsaturated fats, avocados, nuts, olive oil, may facilitate greater fat loss and improvement in insulin sensitivity compared to food that contain trans fats, industrial seed oils, and full fat dairy, butter, cheese, cream, milk. Monounsaturated fats, MCTs, and omega-3s, especially EPA and DHA, our dietary dream team. When it comes to losing body fat, preserving muscle mass, and building even more lean muscle, these fats send your body messages to let go of excess fat, hold on to precious muscle, and keep your metabolism humming along, whether you're in the middle of a workout or just relaxing. On the other hand, vegetable oils high in omega-6 set in motion the perfect storm for gaining body fat and hanging on to that fat, no matter how hard you work to get rid of it. So instead of reaching for a burger from a corn-fed cow, favor meat from grass-fed and pastured animals, and make wild-caught seafood a bigger part of your diet. The critically important omega-3s are fats you could definitely feel good about eating. Supplements. Pushing through the overwhelm. We believe that whole foods are always the best sources of nutrients, and in Chapter 9, we'll walk you through the good food fats to choose and the bad food fats to avoid. But we also understand that it's not easy to consume as much healthy toxin-free seafood as you might need to get a therapeutic dose of DHA and EPA, enough to make a significant impact on a specific condition, and your budget might not allow for a diet consisting exclusively of grass-fed meats, wild game, and other foods richer in DHA and EPA. Plus, if you've been following a conventional Western diet for most of your life, you may want to first dig yourself out of the omega-6 hole, so to speak, to consume extra omega-3s in order to establish a better balance of fats in your body before decreasing your, do your dose down to an everyday maintenance level. 
with these issues in mind, it might be nearly impossible for you to get enough omega-3 solely through whole foods. This is where supplementation comes in. We understand that sorting through the overload of capsules, bottles, powders, and pills at the store could be so overwhelming that no one could blame you for giving up and walking out empty-handed. And while we've written extensively about the detrimental changes in the modern food supply that have wreaked havoc on your health, there are some aspects of modern food technology that could serve your best interests. Marine oils, fish, krill, and algal oil, and other fatty acid supplements are among them. Fish oil. Since fish oil is the most economical supplemental source of DHA and EPA, let's start here. It is important to be wary of mass market officials that come with an extremely low price tag. Improperly manufactured and stored fish oils will likely cause you more harm than good. Remember, these fats are highly unsaturated, so they're easily oxidized, and some less than reputable brands may not even contain the full amounts of EPA and DHA claimed on their labels. Some heat and light are two of the factors that damage these fragile oil oils it's a good idea to store fish oil in the refrigerator and I, and it might be even better to store it in the freezer pure fish oil won't freeze we recommend taking omega-3s with your largest meal of the day in order to reduce the mild gastrointestinal discomfort that might result as well as the fishy burps some people experience as for dosing the u.s FDA considers 3 grams of combined EPA and DHA per day to be safe. When eating fish, you should be select about where your fish oil comes from because not all fish are created equal. Certain fish may have levels of mercury and other contaminants high enough to outweigh the benefits you might get from taking fish oil derived from them. Salmon are lower in these contaminants than other fish, but fish oil supplements derived from smaller fish and other aquatic Life lower down on the marine food chain, such as sardines, anchovies, or krill, are even safer. But as far as supplements go, the good news is that regardless of what type of fish oil you take, the production of this kind of oil requires extensive processing and purification, including distillation at a relatively high temperature. This refinement removes heavy metals and also reduces a number of persistent organic pollutants. As a result, concern about heavy metals and other pollutants in fish and other seafood is a more important issue when purchasing these foods to eat rather than the purified oils. On the other hand, this purification process must be handled carefully so as not to damage these highly fragile oil oils. So make sure you are using a reputable source which may not necessarily be the cheapest. Fish oil. Does formulation matter? In their natural state, EPA and DHA are, are bound in triglycerides. For just as we store our fat with triglycerides, so to do fish. Pre prescription fish oils, on the other hand, typically contain EPA and DHA bound in another kind of molecule called an ethyl ester. Some manufacturers produce fish oils that have been restored to the triglyceride form, referred to as Reesterified TAG or RTAG. Although both forms are effective for increasing the omega 3 index, the amount of omega 3 in red blood cells, the RTAG form gets the job done a bit better. So look for fish oils produced by manufacturers who take this extra step. <clears throat> a word of caution on heavily refined omega 3 oils. As you learn in chapter 2 and 3, the industrial refinement of food may have unintended consequences. In the case of trans fat, it was a health catastrophe on a global scale, with the true extent of damage not known until nearly a century later. When you source your marine fats naturally, i.e. by eating fish rather than supplements, your EPA and DHA come with many other complex fatty acids and nutrients which have additional benefits, including some we may not fully understand. Heavy refinement omega-3 oils may alter or destroy these naturally occurring compounds in ways we cannot anticipate, but we don't want to make this sh the same over-industrializing mistake twice. We recommend choosing supplements that have undergone only minimal and careful processing. 
Guidelines for supplementing with fish oil. Store it in the refrigerator or freezer. 1. Keep away from light. 2. Take with a meal. 3. Avoid consuming with iron-rich foods as iron may oxidize omega-3 PUFAs in the acidic environment of the stomach. 4. The optimal dose of combined EPA and DHA for most people is 3 to 4 grams per day. 5. Krill oil. Krill, tiny crustaceans that resemble shrimp, are found in oceans around the globe. The most abundant species of krill, Euphrasia superba, are found only in the cold southern ocean that surrounds the continent Antarctica, known as Antarctic krill. This unique species feeds on microalgae and swarms so large that they can be seen from outer space. Krill are located at the near bottom of the food chain, which in combination with living in a very clean environment, means they are virtually free from any of the harmful contaminants found in larger marine species. Compared to other forms of omega-3 supplements, krill oil has the highest absorption rate of the omega-3s, EPA, and DHA into tissue. The EPA and DHA in krill oil are largely bound to phospholipids, an important comp component of cell membranes. These phospholipids are digested by your body differently and better than the fish oil is found in ethyl ester or triglyceride form. Recent research has shown that the delivery of fatty acids like DHA and arachidonic acid into the brain and tissue is directly dependent on the fatty acids being in phospholipid form. Besides containing an efficient form of EPA and DHA, krill contains many other beneficial nutrients, including estoxanthin. Estoxanthin. Estoxanthin is a powerful antioxidant that is responsible for the pink color found in krill, salmon, and even flamingos. It's commonly referred to as the king of a antioxidants, and for good reason. Studies have su suggested that astaxanthin est 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 is 6,000 times more potent in, in uh, antioxidant than vitamin C. 550 times more potent than vitamin E and 40 times more potent than beta carotene. In addition to astaxanthin, krill oil also contains a large dose of choline at 55 to 75 milligrams of choline per gram of krill oil. Choline is an essential nutrient for a diverse array of critical bodily functions. Like EPA and DHA, the choline in krill is bound to phospholipids, making them phosphatidylcholine, a highly absorbable form of the this valuable and difficult to obtain nutrient. Research suggests that phosphatidylcholine can support liver health and prevent the progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease (NAFLD). In addition, for the brain to effectively absorb omega-3 fatty acids, it must pass through a specific transport molecule known as MFSD2A. This process requires that fatty acids are bound to lysophosphatidylcholine. One can get your phosphatidylcholine as supplemental lecithin, derived from either soy or sunflower. But note that in lecithin, the fats are omega-6 rather than long-chain EPA or DHA, so you would be without the those additional benefits. The phospholipids in krill are fragile structures, so to maintain the integrity of the precious omega-3 oil, it must be gently extracted using natural ethanol, water, and a low heat process. Because of this gentle and natural extraction process as well as the absence of many of the harmful contaminants found in the ocean, krill oil is closer to a clean whole food than any other processed fish oil. Concerns about krill sustainability. 
How sustainable is the crow fishing industry in their frigid Arctic home? Some, since krill are a primary food source for whales, many have expressed concerns that harvesting krill is killing the whales. The marine ecosystem is very delicate, so this is a legitimate concern that responsible krill oil manufacturers have gone to great lengths to respect. In 1982, as part of the Antarctica Treaty System, the Convention on the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, CCAMLR, was established, largely due to concerns about krill fisheries in the region. The CCAMLR re regulates krill fisheries, helping to prevent any adverse impacts on the fragile Antarctic ecosystem. Some krill oil fisheries have even taken their sustainability efforts further, certifying themselves under the prestigious Marine Stewardship Council, MSC, an organization dedicated to the preservation of Earth's oceans. The MSC website states the best available signs from CCA MLR suggest that krill fishing is at such a low level that penguins and marine animals, which also consume krill in large quantities, are not negatively impacted by fishing activity. When it comes to health benefits, krill oil has more advantages over other omega-3 oils. For example, krill oil beats fish oil for maximum efficacy in terms of improving blood lipids and reducing inflammation and oxidative stress. According to one study, EPA and DHA from krill oil could achieve similar benefits to fish oil at about 60% of the dose, meaning that you could take a lower dose but have the same effects since your body assimilates and incorporates krill oil more effectively than fish oil. With specific regard to reaching your brain, the bioavailability of omega-3s from krill may be twice as high as that of traditional fish oil. Through fish oil may lead to a higher general levels of DHA compared to krill oil, which may be beneficial in certain situations, such as for people looking to lower their blood pressure. Krill oil is particularly helpful for people with arthritis. Arthritis is an inflammatory condition of the joints. And you know by now that omega-3s have potent anti-inflammatory effects. Think of omega-3s as lubricant for stiff, swollen, painful joints, making them function more smoothly. A double-blind, placebo-controlled trial showed that among people with cardiovascular disease and or rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis, who also had elevated levels of the inflammatory marker C-reactive protein, 300 mg of krill oil daily for three weeks reduced their levels of C-reactive protein by about 32%, while CRP actually increased by as much as 32% in the placebo group. The krill oil group also had a significantly reduced pain, stiffness, and functional impairment. How about PMS? In a double-blind randomized trial testing 70 patients with PMS with half taking fish oil and half taking krill oil, those on krill oil showed significantly improved dysmenorrhea, painful periods, as well as the emotional symptoms associated with PMS. Women taking krill oil needed fewer pain-relieving medications than those taking fish oil. Another study reinforced that krill oil is more effective than fish oil for improving not only the emotional symptoms of PMS but also breast tenderness and joint pain. The study authors noted that these benefits may have been due to the omega-3s counteracting or at least lessening the inflammation that was driven by inflammatory compounds derived from omega-6 fats. So if you're a woman of reproductive age and you experience difficult and painful periods, omega-3 supplementation, particularly with krill oil, might help, but also be sure to cut back on omega-6 in your diet as a maintenance dose if you're already healthy and want to stay that way. We recommend 500 milligrams daily of krill oil as a therapeutic dose if you're addressing a condition that may respond to increased omega-3s. We recommend one to three grams.